Thank you for welcoming me. Your generation are doomed. About well, less than 5% of you have got top grades in maths, English, and science. That means over 95% of the young people in this country are coming out of school really not highly equipped for a world of a knowledge-based economy. We have got 25% of your generation coming out who are struggling with numeracy, 17% with literacy. We are quite literally in a national crisis. Your generation have lower skills than your grandparents' generation. And that is really worrying. And I would suggest to you that we're lost in a land of political sound bites and technology and all sorts of things. And what we ought to be doing is checking the obvious. And the reason I think this is because I live in Croydon. I see a huge number of social problems. They all go back to problems related to things like special educational needs. Over half of our prison inmates have problems with special educational needs. Over half of our mental patients do. Having special educational needs, struggling to learn, is going to be one of the issues that will really mark you down as being that risk person. So real nightmare, plus the fact you guys have got to earn a decent living to pay incredible costs of housing, energy, and so on. And unless you're one of the high earners, you're going to be poor. And poor in Croydon means you live in a bed sit, you'll never earn enough to head up a household, earn a living, support yourself. It's quite a nightmare. So I want to tell you how to be mega clever, really. <laughs> the key point in my life was when I found my local hospital, known locally as May Die, had blinded my son. They'd eye patched him for three years to correct his lazy eye, and the effect of this had been they'd blocked off the links between his eyes and his brain. So by six years old, all he was down to was very poor quality core vision, just about the size of a smarty tube. He had no peripheral vision and was losing the use of his left side. He'd forgotten it was there, so stopped using it. And it's not as if I hadn't kind of known there was a problem. I had been to education authorities. I had been to school teachers. I'd been to the hospital. I'd said, hey, there's a problem. And they all, of course, said, no, you're a stupid, neurotic woman. And like you saw in the cartoons we saw earlier, women learn to conform. It's very painful to be outside the group. But I knew there was a problem. And at, by six, we'd really sort of confirmed it. And what I had to do was start to understand what it really meant to learn and how to sort out my son. And I set off on a mission. And I started scouring the internet. And the internet is one of the great empowerers of women today. When my mother was in her 30s, 40s, she'd go to the GP, and the GP would be the only area of expertise. And he would say something placatory, and that was it. She was stuck with the problem on her own. I could scour the world, and I was hugely lucky. After a couple of weeks, I found some South Africans. South Africans knew how to knit children back together. I was even luckier that one of them lived in South London, about 40 minutes drive away. And so off we went, and they taught me everything they knew about human development. If you want to know about human development, first of all, go and have a look at a mammal. Good thing about mammals, if they don't develop, they get eaten. Therefore, they develop. And if you look at our lion, our lioness, you can see her ears are up, her eyes are scanning, out to the horizon, into the core, out to the horizon. She must keep scanning or a predator will get her. She must be smelling, sniffing around, sensing the air. She's feeling. All her senses are fully integrated. Her muscle system is fully developed for fight or flight. Super well developed. Children take a mite longer. Our children take 25 years to develop fully. So most of you in this room haven't yet arrived. <laughs> and you've got a lot to do on that journey. Vision in human is hugely complex. You're seeing 3D. About 80% of your learning is visual, and you need to see patterns. It is your brain that sees, it is not your eyes. And it is your brain that does all that interrogation, that sees patterns, that sees times tables, that can see relevant from irrelevant in a comprehension, that can rotate things in your mind's eye so you can do multiple choice. 
and you can see colour. Auditory is also key in a human, so you can discriminate between language. Within six weeks of birth, you'll be able to tell the difference between your language and other languages. You start screening out sounds. Our muscle system is highly complex. Obviously, hopefully, we start out on all fours, then we move up to being a biped. That involves a lot of development. And we have executive functions that you really see kicking in in the teenage years, and that's why teenagers are lumpy and grumpy as those prefrontal lobes develop, and then they come out at the end of 15, 16, and they're a join and delight to be with again. But much can go wrong on the journey. You've got 100 billion pathways. It's like having 100 billion on-off switches, and you want to get as many of those on switches on. Bet you I could stop any of you in this room, you can tell me what you can't do. You know, you know what your off switches are. You know what you struggle with. And through exercising your brain and the inputs to your brain, you can increase the things you can do. Inputs are absolutely vital. Remember our lion, eyes, ears, smell, muscle system, absolutely vital to get the inputs there. The brain's incredibly plastic, can repair damage, if you stimulate it properly. Much more important, remember, it can close down pathways. So like we heard about Congolese women in the previous lecture, they can close down pathways when they're hurt. What you should think about when you see a hoodie, a kid with a hood is telling you, I don't have good peripheral vision. They've closed down their pathways. And the human cognitive development is a whole system. It's not happening in little bits, but our hospitals happen in little bits. When you go to your hospital and you talk about something, you're seeing a specialist, and that's what they think about, their little silo of knowledge. You can't develop higher level skills until you've mastered the lower level. We've got lots of four-year-olds sitting in schools, and they're being asked to read, write, and do all sorts of things, and yet actually they haven't really mastered using their two eyes together, using their auditory discrimination, and using their muscle systems properly, particularly those poor little boys of four, it's a terrible struggle, which is a good explanation for why our European partners putting children into school at seven have a much higher success rate. When you master a skill, you can do it unconsciously. So standing here, I'm not thinking about R, lift up, left leg, move it, off to the left, lift up, right leg, move it. I've mastered it, I can do that without thinking. But I am thinking about what I'm gonna say next. You, once you have mastered something, you do it unconsciously. So if you think of someone playing a piano, they are able to use their gross motor skills, their big, big muscles, they can read unconsciously, they can use their fine motor skills, all pretty much unconsciously. They're probably thinking about the next page. It's all integrated, and that's the highest level of learning. It is highly complex, like great big knitting pattern. Our glorious Prime Minister criticised Indian dancing for not being good sport. If you want a really fantastic piece of cognitive integration, you want the top of the tree, go for Indian dancing. Eyes to hand to brain, going across the midline, working to rhythm, so you're having to think rhythm, sound, music, you're having to think where you are spatially. It is extremely complex. You're doing very fine movements because you've already mastered great big gross motor skills. It is no coincidence that as a deputy head in an all-girls school in South London years ago, our science sets were dominated by the Asian girls. They were the ones who really had got skills up to very high levels. And I would suggest that Indian dancing was a really important part of that cognitive integration. However, the side I'm really worried about, someone lives in Croydon who went through the riots in 2011 as a community leader who's very much about coming to, getting to grips with what is going on, is the hell that happens in a family when we don't check things. And we literally do not, as a country, check children have got good muscle control. We do not check 
the hearing full range, and we do not check both eyes are working together. Here's typical family story, and this happens all the time. Mum goes into school with wretched child, usually a boy, of course, but, you know, it, it's the child is, is playing up at school. The child is, is not doing well, is not thriving. And what happens is all the mums are there at the end of the school day in groups, but after a few weeks, our mum learns always to be on her own because she knows she's going to be called in to talk. And so she is at her wit's end and worried. She's isolated. Start putting somebody into isolation. It's the worst thing you can do for them because they start having fight and flight sense. Their amygdala, their core brain starts panicking and they literally get to the school gate and the child probably only five or six and mum is already in fight or flight. She doesn't like going there. She is strained. The strain she feels will be picked up unconsciously by the rest of the family. So everybody in the family is already tense. Everybody hates the school. That's where everything goes wrong. The family were quite happy before the child went to school, but now they're at school, mum's a bit rubbish, child is dreadful, everybody's isolated. And the stress starts putting a huge strain on the whole family. Nobody actually checks that the child is functioning fully, that all the messages are going to the brain. No one attempts to correct anything. Our PE isn't good enough, our basic medical checks aren't. But the child is bad. And we label children bad. This is a child I've seen recently. Our hospital, the one that blinded my son, swore blind that he could see and that his eyes were working together. This is a very simple piece of technology called a visograph and you can see yourselves. The left eye is not working. It isn't moving smoothly with the right eye. Right and left eye should move smoothly together in order to send messages to the brain. If you don't have them working together smoothly, they cannot possibly send messages to the brain effectively. It's just like you have with dyslexic, dyspraxic, ADHD. What's happening is one eye might be sending one message, the other eye is sending another message. The brain needs both messages to be identical to get stereopsis, to get binocular vision. That's not happening. We do not check our children's vision that it is working together, that they can focus, refocus, focus back. So you can see children in classrooms who simply can't focus and refocus from their book to the blackboard and back again. You can see children who cannot use both eyes together in order to see patterns. It is a ridiculous thing not to check. We don't check that our children can go across their midline it's really important to know your left and right. Really important to be able to lie on the floor and to be able to move one leg, one arm, going across your midpoint at the same time without moving anything else. You ought to go home and practice it on yourselves and your family. And it's interesting because actually, if you don't know that left and right and you're not going across your midline, it affects your spatial awareness. It affects your ability to do maths. It affects your ability to understand how to rotate images. It's really important, and it's obviously highly teachable. The other thing we don't check is sit-ups. We don't check that children have the strength to hold their body in place for a day at school. Most children I screen haven't got stereops vision, haven't got this midline crossing, and they can't sit up. So they don't sit up, so they keel over, they close off one eye, they're down to monocular vision, they easily damage the other eye, and they don't thrive. The other thing we don't look at is our auditory range. This is quite a nice little diagram from the French group Tomatis. Tomatis do very interesting therapy, exercising the muscles in children's ears. A lot of children don't have good speech because they can't hear very well. We don't change over to being right ear dominant till about six. When you're left ear dominant, there is a slight delay on your hearing. 
So there will be people in this room who find it very difficult to listen and take things in auditorily. And that is simply, if you're left ear dominant, your left brain processes sound, it is more efficient to be right ear dominant, to go from right ear to left brain. There's less of a delay on the hearing. Although it's only a microsecond, it makes a big difference. If you've got your little boy or little girl on the mat at school and they haven't really developed very good hearing, the teacher's talking at them, they may actually not be able to process very much of what the teacher's saying. Some children's hearing is so defective that, or so limited, they can't hear the range that's necessary for their own language. As you can see, English is very high pitched. If you're hearing on a low pitch, you may find it very difficult to hear English. That is why we are nationally so useless at languages, because we screen out quite a wide range of sounds and actually, if we had more music, we were exposed to a greater variety of sounds when we were young, we'd have a wider hearing range. But we're cutting the arts education busily so that we're reducing the hearing range we will have. Absolutely vital that you do lots of music and auditory activities with children to give them as wide a range as possible of sounds. But it is entirely correctable, you can get children to hear a much wider range of sounds. And the French have done a lot of very good work on it. What's really scary for me is that we are not automatically screening young offenders. We don't check their eyes are working together. If you've got ADHD, it's not just that one eye is a bit wonky, it, you're getting a flicker all the time. If it's flickering all the time, you're constantly disturbed. So not surprisingly, you can't judge when anyone is around you. You cannot manage your own behavior very well. And obviously, then you can relate that down to mental health patients. A bit more extreme behavior, you're soon into mental health. Soldiers leaving the army, we know they've got problems because trauma closes cognitive pathways. 2012, I set up a community interest company to promote the whole business of sorting out the basics in children. We simply don't need to have children in the condition we've got them in this country. Thank you for listening.